Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going over my DraftKings FanDuel and Price Picks plays for July 7th, Thursday. We have 10 games on the main slate, so let's go ahead and get started. As always, if you enjoy the content, appreciate it. If you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out all the other links down below in the description. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet on Price Picks, use my code PROCESS for a deposit match up to $100. And let's go ahead and get started. So, looking at the lineup today on the main slate for DraftKings. First one up we have is the Angels against the Orioles. Have a decently high total game, 4.6 for the Angels, 4.7 for the for the O's. O's have been winning a lot of games recently thanks to Cedric Mullins leading them to just been great over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you have two pretty poor pitchers going at it, so Mullins is expensive, but he still looks like a great one-off play, or you can put him as part of a stack. Mullins, Mountcastle, Santander would be my favorites. On the Angels side, you know, Otani Trout are always the two top dogs. Nobody else really looks that appealing besides maybe Jared Walsh. But uh, this game might have some interest because Camden Yard still a, is a good hitter ballpark. Second game up, you have Wilson against Sessa. This is the second half of a doubleheader for this one. So we don't have the official totals yet, but you know neither pitcher is that uh, intimidating. So can look to some of these cheap bats like uh, definitely Brian Reynolds has been great for the Pirates all season, especially over the past couple of weeks. You have good price tags on uh, the middle part of the order with Suwinski, Vogelbach, Cruz. And then on the red side, you have good, decent price tags on Joey Votto, who's day-to-day, -day, but if he's in there, he looks solid. If Jonathan India is only 4,000, and then Tyler Naquin at 44. Next game up is the Mets against the Marlins. Like the Mets a good amount against any sort of lefties, especially Mark Canna, super cheap at 34. He looks like a great play. Other ones would be Pete Alonso, Marte, and Lindor. Don't have much interest on the Miami side in terms of the bats here. So I'd maybe some of the cheap guys like Aguilar, Cooper, or Brian Anderson. We got Garrett Cole going at it, uh, wind blowing out a bit in um, Fenway. So could see some more run score than usual in this one, but Cole has still been a good pitcher. Uh, Red Sox did get to him earlier this year in their meeting, uh, so maybe if you wanted to play for GPPs, you can look to some of these Red Sox bats, but they're not in play in any sort of cash game. And then on the Yankee side, coming off of I think 16 runs last night, a couple of grand slams for them. Good price tags on Donaldson, Hicks for cheap. You know, if you're paying up, it's always going to be for Judge and Stanton. Next up, we have a lefty for the Cardinals going up against the Braves, so... A lefty looking at a lot of these right-handed power bats. Riley Acuna, good pr cheap price tag on Duval for tournaments at 31. Looks solid. Don't have much interest at all in the Cardinals bats. They have a pretty low total for tournaments. Maybe Carlson, Yep is just cheap guys with some power. That could be interesting. Got the White Sox. Looks like one of my favorite pitching options today. Dylan Cease going up against a strikeout prone, not a ton of power Detroit Tigers team. So uh, Dylan sees at home looks solid. And they got a big piece in their lineup back yesterday with the return of Eli Jimenez, who um, made, marked his return with the bomb. So do like the White Sox offense a lot. They're going to be one of my favorite stacks. You got some cheap guys in there with Gavin Sheets and uh, Garcia. And you got some power and even Vaughn. And you got some uh, more expensive but powerful guys with Anderson, Robert, Abreu, and Eli Jimenez. So lineup looks a lot better with Eli Jimenez back in there. A couple of lefties going at it. A couple of guys that don't have great strikeout stuff at all. Ground ball pitchers, especially Dallas Keuchel. Chris Bryant looking better recently. Hit a home run, I believe, yesterday or two days ago. So he looks good against any sort of lefty. You know he has great numbers against lefties for his career. Other option would be Jonathan Daza at 29 just to get to another cheap guy. And then on the Diamondbacks side, you know, I like the Rockies more, but I uh, have good cheap price tag on the top two guys. Luplo, who has like 10 home runs on the season. He's always good against lefties. Cooper Hummel at 26 looks solid, and then um, maybe like Buddy Kennedy is just so cheap. So any sort of value these Diamondbacks could be supply you some today. Not much interest in any sort of bats in the next game. This could be a nerfy on price picks. It could be where you get some of your pitchers from, but don't have any interest in the bats here. And then we have some Blue Jays bats going up against Marco Gonzalez. Does give up some home runs, so look to any sort of these right-handed bats. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez has been on the tear recently. Gurriel is cheap at 36. Springer is always good against lefties. And Vlad is sub 5K at 48. Those will be my top four. And then Casey Lawrence, don't know much about him. Uh, but you have Julio Rodriguez has been absolutely dominating over the last month or so. He's super expensive, but definitely deserving so. So he looks like a good one-off play. Cheap guys would be like Toro's looking a little bit better recently. 34 just to get to a value 
But overall, not a team I'd stack, but a couple of guys, maybe a mini stack with Rodriguez Toro could be interesting. And then last but not least, we got the Dodgers going up against the Cubs here. Tony Gonsolin, been great this year. I believe he's, I don't know if he's still leading the MLB in ERA, but he's up there on the Dodgers side. He bets finally got bumped up a little bit up to 5K. He had a game winner last night, walk-off hit for him. So I still mind the Dodgers bats at all. They have a high total once again against uh, a pitcher that won't K too much and uh, just get against a lot of righties, but don't have much interest. All these righties are super powerful, especially the top half of the lineup. Going back to DraftKings, pit, first pitcher is going to be Dylan Cease. Going up at home against this Detroit Tigers team. He's faced them already twice this year. He has 16 Ks against them in 10 innings. He was only given up one earned run and has averaged 26 fantasy points. He's been better with the fantasy points at home. The strikeouts have just been insane at home. 80 strikeouts in 50 innings. So no problem starting your lineup with Dylan Cease. And then I'm going to start it with uh, the second guy. is going to be another expensive guy with Tony Gonsolin. He's $9,400, so a little bit cheaper than he's been recently. He's over, he was over 10 k in his last start. Cubs, not very powerful at all. Offensively, they strike out a lot, and he has the lowest ERA at home at .88 ERA at home with the okay strikeout stuff. And recently, they're letting him go over 90 pitches, which is good to see. So with the Dodgers being favored to win heavily, could get the win and get you some extra fantasy points that way as well. First up in the uh, first base option, I'm going with the White Sox, one of my favorite stacks today, going Andrew Vaughn. He's only $4,000, should still be batting like second or third in the batting order, even with the return of Eli Jimenez. Overall, having a great season, had a bomb yes yesterday and almost have his 300 average. Uh, it's a spot where you know, he's already faced this uh, Tigers team six times and has played very well. It's a team that he's crushed this year, 542 average with a couple of bombs. And Brusque is a, a rookie pitcher for the Tigers, doesn't have any experience going up against any of these White Sox bats yet. So this is his first time seeing them. So it could be even more dangerous um, you know, if they're able to get a good read. He doesn't have good strikeout stuff at all. 46 Ks in 69 innings. So, you know, White Sox team that doesn't K much. I mean, that won't have to worry about striking out much, and they don't even K that much in general. He's been very poor on the road. Looks good for the White Sox to continue uh, hitting the ball well. Over at second base, definitely can look to like Jose Alt or Jose Alt was on the early slate, uh, but maybe like uh, Cattell Marte at 47. If you're looking to target him against a lefty, this is a pretty sneaky game stack, I could say, with uh, two lefties and uh, you got some decent right-handed bats with some power across the board. Uh, maybe going down to like Max Muncy at 44. He's still pretty affordable. Gleyber Torres, 4,000. Looks pretty affordable as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip the position for right now. Over at third base, uh, looking to pay up for anybody. It would be for Austin Riley for me. Going up against the lefty and uh, Matt Libertor. Going with the value piece would be like Max Muncy. If you can go down here to maybe like a Toro at 34 against Lawrence. Does you know He's been okay recently. Has a couple of multi-hits in his last four games. He looks all right. At shortstop, sticking with the White Sox a bit, going with Tim Anderson. Pretty affordable at 53. You know, he's been cold recently, but it's a good spot for him to get back on track against a pitcher that doesn't strike out guys much. And if he does happen to get on base, you know, Anderson does give you stolen base upside. Um, just a matter of time. You know, this White Sox team has, as a whole, has done well against this Tigers pitching staff. So, a matter of time before he starts to get back to himself and starts crushing the ball. 53 on a shortstop position where you do have some guys at the top end, like Lindor Turner might get some more ownership. So, it could see Anderson become a little bit less popular. In the outfield, going with Chris Bryant to get us started. He's only $4,200, starting to hit the ball better. Going up against a lefty, which is always good news for Chris Bryant. Up to a 293 average, missed a lot of games so far. Finally had his first home run. Uh on a couple days ago on the 5th. Hopefully he can carry that into today's game. And in his last three games, he has five or six total hits. So he's starting to see the ball better. Only 1K in that span as well. And Keiko is not a strikeout pitcher by any means. And the final guy is going to be Mark Canna at 34. Another guy that's always good against lefties. You can look at his splits if you want to uh, become convinced. Uh, but at home, you know, he's done fine. He's pretty similar at home and on the road, which is good because... City Field is still a pretty big ballpark, uh, but should be batting. Maybe they give him a bump in the batting order. Typically, bats like six or seven. They could see him maybe bat in the middle 
against the lefty if they decide to shake up the lineup a little bit. But at this price tag, like the Mets, they have a plus five run total, even though they're at home in, in a not so great hitting park. So that's what I like for DraftKings. Go ahead and look at FanDuel. All right, over on FanDuel, pretty similar in terms of the pitcher. D Dylan Cease is going to be my favorite. He's not even the most expensive on FanDuel. He's the third most expensive with uh, how much strikeout upside that he gives you. He's going to definitely be my favorite. Other option would be maybe Gonsolin, but Cease does give you upside for more pitches, probably like at least 10 more pitches on a on every start basis. Uh, third base, I like Chris Bryant. He can play him at third base or in the outfield, so he's going to be a great option to just like on DraftKings. Shortstop, I stuck with Tim Anderson because he's only 34 so he's definitely cheap compared to, like, Turner. He's almost $1,000 cheaper than him. And in that range, you know, you have Trevor Story against um, – you have Trevor Story and Bogarts both against Garrett Cole, so tough matchups for him. Definitely Tim Anderson sticks out and then don't have way more interest in him than any of the guys that are a little bit cheaper than him. Eli Jimenez, price tag has not caught up to him on FanDuel yet. 2900 bucks, way too cheap. And now Mark Hanna, again, just with the power that he gives you against lefties. Projected about 7th, but we could maybe see him a little bit higher against a lefty. Uh, but that's it for FanDuel. Let's go ahead and touch on price picks. All right, over on price picks, we got a lot of props to pick from. First up at the strikeouts prop, you got Verlander. He's at 6 right now. Uh, definitely looks appealing. It's an early start against the Royals. Maybe his fantasy score looks a little bit better when we get to that, but definitely in play. Another over. You know, don't have much interest in taking the over any of these guys here. Uh... Garrett Cole could definitely be in play against the Red Sox. They are still dangerous with the wind blowing out a little bit. Uh, but Cole can easily get there. We've seen him put up double digit strikeouts many times this year and over his career. But first guy that I have a lot of interest in, Dylan Cease, at 7.5. Uh, he's absolutely just dominated this Detroit Tigers team for his career. And he's 10 0 with the 1.91 ERA and 75 strikeouts. This year, he's faced them twice already. He's averaged 16 strikeouts in the 10 innings. He's only gone five in each start. Um, but, you know, he's got the over in both of the starts this year. Uh, last year, he had a 10K game, a 7 and a 5. Uh, but this year, he's just been a much different pitcher than typical. He's just been unbelievably good. And even back when he was inconsistent, he still absolutely crushed this Tigers team. So, C is going to be one of my favorite prop to consider. Uh, Gonsolin is at 6. Maybe he looks okay, but I like his fantasy probably a little bit better. We'll be looking at a nerfy today, and the first and the one that sticks out is definitely the Giants Padres nerfy with Musgrove. And um, on the other side, you got Logan Webb, two pretty good pitchers, has the lowest total by far on the slate at uh, sub at 3.4 and 3.8. So looking at like a seven run total, 7.2. Right now, could get down to seven. It's going to be the nerfy of the day. The pitcher fantasy score definitely have some that look interesting. Looking at uh, Dylan C's at 41.5, looks solid. Gonsolin's at 40.5, taking the over there just with how consistent he's been, especially at home with a sub one ERA. Uh, gives you okay strikeout stuff, but you know now that they're letting him go over 90 pitches, can get you the quality start uh, if he goes six innings just because he doesn't give up very many runs at all. And decent chance, if not a really good chance of getting the win against uh, Mark Leiter Jr. with uh, Dodgers being almost two full runs favored over the Cubs. So that's my favorite one. Another one would definitely be looking at Justin Verlander. We can look at that as well. See if there's any hitter fantasy scores that look interesting. Uh, maybe looking at, depending on some of these, the Phillies with uh, continues to, Kyle Schwarber continues to just hit home runs. So that one was absolutely free once again yesterday. I uh, really like it again today, even though it's at nine and a half. Um, you know, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Kyle Schwarber over fantasy once again today has come through the last two days easily by far. You know, he's tripled it with back-to-back multi-home run games. And Phillies have a super high total on the early slate today, going up against a pitcher that will give up bombs and just doesn't give you great strikeout stuff. They have almost a six-run total. So I really like Schwarber. I like uh, Cedric Mullins as well. Uh, he's been really good recently, taking the over eight and a half. Looks solid. For me, see if there's anybody. There's a lot of props already on the board. I don't have much interest taking any of the Red Sox props over. Uh, we have some good ones for the for the Chicago White Sox as well. You have Robert Anderson and Abreu is only at 7.5. Um, you know, another one that I played in DFS, Chris Bryant is at 8.5. He looks solid as well against a lefty with how, many, um, with how good he's been recently and how good he is always against lefties. So looking at Chris Bryant, he has just the hitter fantasy score prop, but I'm taking the over 
Um, mix it up a little bit. Haven't really played any Chris Bryan props this year, but recently he's been good and nothing to worry about with Dallas Keuchel. You know, he did get let go by the White Sox earlier this year, and that's always not a good sign when that happens. So on prize picks today, over 7.5 strikeouts for Dylan Cease, under half a run, Giants, Padres, over 40.5 fantasy, Tony Gonsolin, over 9.5 fantasy, Kyle Schober, and over 8.5 fantasy for Chris Bryant. Best of luck today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button before you head out, and I will see you all next time.